Upfront Ventures was also one of the earliest investors in Ring Doorbell, which was bought by Amazon for a billion dollars. So I want to start there. You know, um, first of all, what do you make of that acquisition and Amazon, you know, continuing to push the boundary of new and unexpected businesses to enter? Well, I mean, Amazon is obviously it's one of the biggest platforms in the world, the everything store, as we know. And I think, you know, they're, they're very creative about um, continuing to double down on innovation and all the ways that touch our personal lives. And the home, home safety, security is a huge area of focus, obviously, in today's uh, today's world. Um, there are a number of different companies that you that could have become big in that space. And Ring did an incredible job of not just building an incredible hardware and software product, but also building an ongoing revenue stream behind the scenes. In a way, Amazon's innovativeness is kind of difficult for a venture capitalist. Amazon can either make your company by buying it or destroy your company by trying to enter that business and making your company or the startup you've invested in irrelevant. How does that impact your investment decisions when the giants that are the giants are bigger than ever? Absolutely. I think you, you, when you're a venture capitalist, you think about Amazon nearly every time you make an investment. Um, and it really crystallizes who you should be backing. Anytime you back an entrepreneur that's building something that a category Amazon might go into, it's a bit a bit daunting. Or Facebook, or Apple, or Google. For sure. But I mean, I think if you talk to later stage investors, it's Amazon, 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 um, because they have done such a good job of moving from commerce to web services to nearly every category. Um, we look for areas that uh, scale isn't naturally necessarily an advantage. It used to be you could win with the back end and supply chain and excellent, you know, returns. Now you really have to find those categories um, where amp where brand plays a real role in getting to distinct affinity groups of end users. As an example, food or home, where Amazon has obviously made a very big play in food, but you know, behavior. You know, people are eating in very different ways. Um, so how does Whole Food serve ketogenic and the Whole 30 and all of these different things? These are, these are areas that Amazon has yet to figure out, and we're being small and nimble um, can uh, often be a big advantage. Now, you have been very active outside of Upfront Ventures as part of All Raise, a new nonprofit to increase the number of women founded, women founders being funded, and the number of women in venture capital. Um, you know, this is after many, many years of, of underrepresentation. You know, what sort of response have you gotten to this? I mean, I've heard a lot of congratulations, but also I've heard from men saying, well, you know, now I'm feeling a little left out. What can I do? Men, it's okay that you're feeling a little left <laughs> out, right? <laughs> um, no, I, I think the response has been incredible, and this is a movement um, that has come from women and men, and it's really important that we figure out how to get the men as true allies. 91% of the venture capital industry is male. 93% of venture-backed CEOs are male. So it's the men that are going to make the change. Um, and I am very encouraged by how much enthusiasm there is for the organization. I think it happened very organically. It happened across firms. It's happened in a way where the side benefit has been friendship, has been everything from you know doing things I think men have always done. It may not be golf. It may be rosé. Um, and also, you know, sharing deals. And I, so I do think the firms that don't have women really need to be thoughtful about how to bring them in. But even more important, the men who have had success, having them be out there and speaking this even more than we do is what will change the industry. Upfront Ventures has been also at the front of doing some innovative things to encourage its own companies to build diverse teams. And you have sort of a version of the inclusion rider that Francis McDormand talked about at the Oscars, where if you give a company a term sheet, they commit to building a diverse team. Is it working? Yeah, I mean, I think it's early days, but I think it's um, it's working in a couple different ways. Uh, one, I'll just say that that rider didn't come from me. It came from one of my male partners, Greg Bettinelli, and it came, you know, seven months ago. And we just started putting it into term sheets. We said, this is something we believe in. Um, we should put it into term sheets. We should use that as a moment to communicate with our entrepreneurs. What's been really exciting is seeing the entrepreneurs who've signed these term sheets, what they are doing with it and how they're innovating around it. And I'll give you one quick example. Uh, I invested in this great early stage company called Strive Talent. It's run by an entrepreneur named Will Houdeling. He uh, took it, he 
signed it. We talked about it. He now reports on it at every board meeting. I didn't ask him to do it. He grades himself, and I think in the first board meeting, he gave himself a B minus. In the second board meeting, he was up to an A minus. And of the six person team, um, I believe four now are either women or underrepresented minorities. And when you start from the beginning, it is much easier to build that culture um, of inclusiveness and diversity. It is much harder to fix that after the fact. Absolutely. Um, now, I do want to talk to you since you're based in LA, but you know, upfront investors across the country, what are you seeing? specifically in LA that might be different than Silicon Valley? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'll say uh, about half my boards are in Silicon Valley, so I love to visit, but uh, it's a very special time in LA, and I think we're, you know, we're kind of, as we move from this era of bits and bytes to really building applications for industry, LA is in this unique moment because we can build hardware and software companies like Ring that came out of our aerospace and defense heritage. Um, we can build, com we build companies like uh, SpaceX, who's building rocket launchers in the port of LA and so it's an era where tech is necessary but not sufficient and we are really focused on end use solving end user problems in a way that I think is pretty unique.